This video explores the nuclear model of the atom used for GCSE chemistry and GCSE physics. This is common content so it could come up in either exam. By the end of this video you should understand what atoms are, be able to appreciate just how big atoms are and also how much of that is the nucleus, be able to label the nuclear model of the atom, recall the relative charges and masses of the subatomic particles and also understand how to calculate the numbers of those subatomic particles by using a periodic table square. An atom is the smallest part of an element that can exist. So if you take a block of carbon and you break it down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces, the smallest piece that you can have that is still carbon is called an atom. That atom is made from three subatomic particles. Sub means under or smaller than, so a subatomic particle is just something smaller than an atom. And the three subatomic particles are called a proton, an electron and a neutron. Atoms are small, really small, everyone knows that but not everyone understands just how small we're talking. I sometimes get asked, why can't we just use a microscope to look at the atom? Well, when you put a cell under a microscope, you're shining visible light on it and looking at the reflection that comes back. But here's the thing, visible light has a wavelength of something like 400 to 700 nanometers, and an atom is about a thousand times smaller than that, so it's not gonna interact with the visible light in the same way that, say, a cell would. A hydrogen atom has a radius of about 0.1 nanometers, which can also be expressed as 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. That's 20 times smaller than a strand of DNA, it's 1,000 times smaller than a flu virus, it's 30,000 times smaller than your cells. So we're talking really, really tiny here. And then within that atom, actually only 1 ten thousandth is the nucleus. This is a little bit confusing because in diagrams like my one on the left, we tend to draw the nucleus quite large, but that's really just that we can fit the plus signs on the protons. Atoms are made of three building blocks called subatomic particles, and these are called protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are about the same size as each other, and they're found in the center of the atom in a positively charged ball called the nucleus. It's the same word that we use in cells to describe the part where the DNA is stored, but remember, a cell is thousands and thousands of times bigger than an atom is. The electrons are about 2,000 times smaller than the protons and the neutrons are, and they move around the outside of the atom at fixed distances in what we call shells. For GCSE, you may be asked to give the relative mass or relative charge of protons, electrons and neutrons. Relative means compared to something else. If I say that a dog is relatively big, I mean compared to other dogs. I don't mean that it's the size of the moon. So you may have just started out being told that protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neutral. And that is true. But if in the GCSE exam they ask you for the relative charge, it's really important that you put the number there. As you can see, protons have got a relative charge of plus one, and electrons have got a relative charge of minus one. And what that tells me is that the size of those charges or magnitude of those charges is equal and opposite. So that explains why if an atom had three protons and three electrons, overall the atom has no charge. If the charge on a proton was, was bigger than the charge on an electron, then that wouldn't be the case. For GCSE, you may be asked to give the relative masses and relative charges of the subatomic particles. The word relative means compared to something else. So if I say that a dog is relatively large, I mean it's large compared to other dogs. I don't mean it's the size of the moon. When you first started learning about atoms, you may have been told that protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neutral. And that is true. But if a question asks you to give the relative charge, it's really important that you give the number. You'll see here that the relative charge of a proton is plus one, and the relative charge of an electron is minus one. This is really important because it shows us that those charges are the same size or the same magnitude. And that means that one proton and one electron can balance each other out. It explains why an atom that has three protons and three electrons has no overall charge. That wouldn't be the case if the charge on a proton was much bigger than the charge on an electron. You'll also notice that for the relative masses, a proton and a neutron both have a mass of one. So that just tells us that they have a mass that is the same size as each other. The mass of an electron is listed as very small. It's actually about one over 1840, but for GCSE, we just need to know that it's much, much smaller than a proton and a neutron. It's not zero because electrons don't have no mass, it's just that they have a much, much smaller mass. Let's check that that made sense. Pause the video and write down an answer that describes the model for atomic structure that we use today. 
Make sure you name the three subatomic particles and you give the relative masses and relative charges of those particles. Remember, even though this would be a six mark question, it's completely fine to give bullet points in your answer as long as they're in a logical order. OK, so hopefully you managed to name the three subatomic particles as protons, electrons and neutrons. And you said that the protons and the neutrons together make up a small, dense nucleus at the centre of the atom. Surrounding that are the electrons which orbit in shells. Most of the atom is empty space. Remember, the nucleus only makes up one ten thousandth of the whole atom. Protons have got a relative charge of plus one and a relative mass of one. Neutrons have got a relative charge of zero, which means they're neutral, and a relative mass of one. And electrons have a relative charge of minus one and a very small relative mass. Remember, it's not zero, it's very small. Now, what about the different numbers of these subatomic particles? If you look at a periodic table, every element has its own square, and on that square there are two numbers. The larger of the two numbers is the relative atomic mass. How heavy are the atoms of that element compared to other elements? The smaller number is the atomic number, which is sometimes called the proton number. Now, it won't come as a surprise to anyone to know that the atomic number, if it's called the proton number, tells you how many protons that atom has. So this atom of lithium, which has an atomic number of three, has three protons. We already know that atoms are not charged, and so in an atom the number of protons and electrons must be the same. Therefore, my lithium atom also has three electrons. Now we've said earlier in the video that the mass of an electron is so small that it barely influences the mass of the atom as a whole. So if I know that the mass of this lithium atom is seven, it basically has seven heavy particles in it, and I know that three of them must be protons. So if I do seven take away three, that tells me that I must have four neutrons. So you can do this little subtraction to work out how many neutrons there are in an atom. Let's do some quick practice now, calculating the numbers of protons, electrons and neutrons in each of these elements. So, as we said, the atomic number is also called the proton number, and that tells me the number of protons that there are. So in this atom of beryllium, there are going to be four protons, because the smaller of the two numbers on the periodic table square is four. I also know that in an atom, the number of protons and electrons will be the same, so electrons are going to be four as well. And then to work out neutrons, I do my little subtraction. So nine take away four is five. Now if I look at carbon, I've got an atomic number of six, so there are six protons. Protons and electrons are the same, so six electrons. And then neutrons, I do my subtraction, 12 take six is six. For aluminium, I'm going to have 13 protons. Same number of electrons, so that's 13 as well, and I do my little subtraction, 27 take 13 is 14. And then finally, hydrogen. The atomic number is one, so it has one proton. It has the same number of electrons, one electron, and neutrons, one take one is zero. Hydrogen is the only element in the periodic table that routinely has no neutrons. Thank you for watching and I hope that you found that useful. If you'd like some more practice in calculating the numbers of protons, electrons and neutrons, then watch out for a tutorial video coming soon and don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss it.